Hi guys, this is day 20 of the AS Economics 42 Day Revision Challenge and today we are doing balance of payment. What is balance of payment? Well, balance of payment is a record of, uh, of the value of all the transactions between the residents of one country and the residents of all other countries in the world over a given period of time, which means that all the inflows that co that come into the country because the residents of the country have done transactions as well as all the outflows that are also taking place from the country to other countries will be recorded in this balance of payment and these transactions which are causing this inflow and outflow could be exports could be investments could be any payment which is going from the country and being received by the country the inflow that happens in a country uh, is recorded in the balance of payment as a credit entry and has a positive sign because this is the money coming into the country while the outflow of money that happens in an economy we have we record it as a debit entry and it has a negative sign so all the inflows are with a positive sign and credit entry while all the outflows will be a negative sign and are recorded as a debit entry now when we look at balance of payment there are three main sections of balance of payment or three sections of balance of payment one is what we call the current account and we'll talk about it uh, in a little while the second one is capital account and the third one is financial account so what is current account the current account of the balance of payment has basically three things number one is your x minus m of goods and services which is also called our balance our balance of trade now when you look at goods uh, x minus m or net exports we call it your visible balance while when you look at your x minus m of uh, services we call it invisible balance it's one term that we need to remember so visible balance is x minus m of goods invisible balance is x minus m of services and combined together uh, the visible balance plus invisible balance is your balance of trade so the first thing we have within our our current account is number one is our balance of trade which is simply your x minus m of goods and services the second thing we have is what we call uh, net income flows net income flows is simply what we call all the uh, net monetary movement of uh, profits so when we write this monetary movement of profits rent interest and wages so these are all the payments that are received or paid by the country which are incomes and incomes are basically profits rents interests and wages the last section within our uh, current account which matters to us is what we call current transfers when you look at current transfers current transfers are basically all the payments made between country where no good or service change hands what do we mean by this we basically any payment that is being made where no uh, goods have changed hands a good example of this could be for example any uh, foreign aid or grant for example Pakistan received foreign aid from another country for any 
sort of cause that would be where no goods are sold it's just that money is come to you or for example let's say your grandmother lives in uh, the uk and sends you money to uh, pakistan on your birthday that would be basically a gift um, money where no good or service has changed hands so this is those payments where there is no sort of um, buying and selling attached to it so these are the three things the current transfers net income flows and your balance of trade that basically makes your uh, current account of the balance of payment the next section we want to talk about is what we call our capital account so when we look at a capital account a capital account basically includes um, your uh, flow of funds into and out of the country which is associated with acquisition acquisition or disposal of fixed assets so any buying and selling of fixed assets that happen in a country it is also associated with transfer of funds transfer of funds by migrants people who are leaving the country on a permanent level are called migrant and if they move uh, and they take their money away that will be part of the capital account or recorded in capital account or payments of grants payments of grants by the government for projects so here the third thing is basically all the funding related projects that are uh, given to the government or government is sort of paying for any f sort of foreign projects will be recorded here so the the, the difference between this one and transfer payment is, is that uh, transfer payment may not have any sort of uh, project attached to it so all the transfer sort of uh, flows that we saw in our uh, current transfer that we saw in our current account is different from this money because this is where the government is getting money for a particular project while well this could could be your your current transfers could be simply uh, foreign aid which may not have a project attached to it so there is a difference here that we need to understand uh, the the more important account after current account is basically our financial account our financial account is an account which is looking at uh, flow of money into and out of the country that happen for the purposes of investment or deposits uh, or transfer of funds in the financial accounts and there are three sections within the financial account one is my investment uh, which is in terms of what we call a direct investment which is investment in physical assets let me write this investment in physical assets for example china decides to um, us or uh, us decides to sort of open um, a factory in china will be investment in physical assets that will be an inflow in the of 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 money in the financial account as a direct investment it could also be uh, what we call portfolio investment this is the investment that happens when we are investing in what we call investment in financial assets and the financial assets could be you know like uh, stocks bonds uh, shares and so on and so forth these are all financial assets were rather than physical assets which could be uh, in terms of factories and so on so the first section is basically called the financial flows the the, the second section within what we call financial account is what we call um short term financial flows or other financial flows these other financial flows are basically your short term monetary movement st means short term short term 
monetary movement movement which happens uh, between countries and it may include your uh, short term deposits or loans so for example if the interest rate in a country goes up um, and uh, the hot money flows in that hot money may be recorded at short term deposits in the other financial flows account the last section that we have in the balance of payment account is what we call flows flows to and from reserves what is flows to the, to and from from reserves well basically balance of payment should balance uh, the current account plus capital account plus financial account must always be zero because let's say if you have a current account deficit you should have money in the financial account to pay for those deficit let's say what if current account is is in deficit but financial account and capital account do not have surpluses to finance that current account deficit so current account deficit of 20 means we owe people money uh, of 20 for example less this 20 if it doesn't come from capital and financial account so what we need to do is that we need to take money from our reserves of gold so every country has reserves of uh, gold and uh, foreign currency right and foreign currency so what we do is that we take uh, money from our reserves of gold and foreign currency so i'll take a minus 20 i'll uh, take away 20 from uh, sort of my reserves of gold and foreign currency let me write this foreign currency and i'll put that money in my flows to and from reserves as a plus 20 or a credit entry in my balance of payment so this way what i would do is this that i'm able to i'm able to sort of finance the deficit as well so drawing on reserves will represent a credit item in the balance of payment well because when the money is drawn from reserve it represents an inflow inflow in the reserve account so this way we're able to sort of balance a deficit uh, elsewhere in the balance of payment similarly if there's a surplus elsewhere in the balance of payment let's say this was not a minus 20 let's say this was a plus 20 now the government would be what they do is that if there is no deficit elsewhere and if that 20 is extra what the government does is that take that 20 away from your current account and put a minus 20 here so there's a plus 20 here you put a minus 20 here which means that now we will use this money to build up foreign reserves so reserves movement uh, sort of uh, flows to and f- and from reserves is helping us to balance the balance of payment the last thing we want to talk about in the balance of payment is that when we compile all the statistics of the current account and capital account and financial account we find that there are sometimes what we call uh, errors uh, because of the accounting that happens over time so as a result there will not be a balance because there are errors that will be fixed within time and what we do basically is add current account plus capital account plus financial account plus what we call net errors and omissions so all those net errors and omissions kind of like uh, is a number that we add to our sort of uh, balance of payment to make the balance of payment equal so what is net errors and omission net errors and omissions is simply all those items that are later will be accounted uh and the main reason for the errors is that uh, when we obtain these statistics uh, fr- uh from a number of so- sources um and these sources sometimes can lead to a lot of delays uh before items are recorded and sometimes there are omissions that take place so what we say is this that current plus capital plus financial plus net errors and omissions should be a balance of payment and what we are also saying is this that uh if ever the balance of payment does not balance there is always the reserves that play that plays a role in balancing the balance of payment